How realistic is The Godfather's portrayal of the Mafia? One could argue that Francis Ford Coppola's Godfather movies are as accurate a representation of life in the mob as any parody of it, like the 1998 spoof Mafia, starring Jay Moore. Based on insights by Quora contributor John Mixon, we will examine just how realistic The Godfather's characters are compared to the real Mafia. First on Mixon's list is the belief that the Mafia stayed clear of the drug trade. In The Godfather, Don Vito Corleone was not interested in dealing drugs. Yet in real life, the earning potential from distributing and selling illegal substances runs into the multi-millions as seen in the movies on drug trafficking, such as Blow, Scarface, or pretty much any other gangster movie. The drug trade is such a lucrative business that no serious mob boss would think of passing it up. In fact, the Mafia started heroin smuggling as early as the 1950s, reaching its peak in the 80s, along with a highly publicized transnational FBI drug bust. The reality was that the Mafia not only had zero qualms about public stigma or moral issues when trafficking and selling drugs, but this was the very source of their massive increase in fortune, as well as a rise to power. Why would Coppola then choose to portray the main characters as being against the drug trade? I can only guess that it served as an interesting point of conflict. Or perhaps Coppola wanted the audience to view Don Corleone as a man of integrity, with some sort of moral code. Whatever the reason may have been, this brings me to two other flaws, that Mafia Dons are men of honor, and that the characters are too introspective, or as I see it, that the Mafia has a moral code. In The Godfather, Don Vito and Michael were depicted as Mafia men of honor. They were men who kept their word, were fair, respectful, and honest to their people. They took care of business and their families. But are these made men really honorable in real life? Former mobster John Panisi in his interview with Insider states quite literally that honor and loyalty in the mob is a myth, and that greed and selfishness are what characterize the mob today. According to Panisi, who was once a member of the Lucchese crime family, it is very common for men to give up loyalty the moment any of them gets pinched. Loyalty is the first thing that goes down the drain. However, in the movie, Vito Corleone is portrayed as a man who follows a strict code, where loyalty, friendship, respect, and other values carried over from the old country are fervently upheld, where the repercussion of every action is well thought out before a move is made. One name certainly comes to mind, Carlo Gambino. The real-life mafia Don was the embodiment of the old traditions, as portrayed in the movie. He lived a very low-key life, much like Don Corleone. But the way I see it, it is these same qualities that make Don Corleone an extremely introspective crime boss. I find it hard to believe that the heads of crime families today would constantly second-guess themselves or tread too carefully around their rivals. It is easier to believe that greed overwhelms any apprehensions that today's mafia boss might have about their rivals, or even the authorities. The name of the game is money and power, and ultimately each man takes care of things for selfish reasons. If the boss wants it all, it doesn't take much stretch of the imagination that this would include women. Which brings me to the fourth point. Mob bosses have mistresses. Full stop. There is no doubt in my mind that the Mafia's big bosses, with their huge appetites for money and power, also have a huge lust for women. So, to see both Corleone father and son portrayed as mild-mannered, faithful, and loyal spouses is, to me, by far the most unbelievable aspect of The Godfather. And I agree with Mixon completely here. In my opinion, based on how a Mafia Don conducts his life, it follows that he would have a voracious sex drive to match. It is the same intensity of desire that would encompass everything, from food and alcohol to fame and notoriety. So, why would men like Vito and Michael be portrayed as homebound, faithful husbands? Just think of John F. Kennedy and Marilyn Monroe. It is no secret that rich and powerful men aspire to have only the most desirable women at their side, if only to symbolize how they are better than everyone else. In the case of Kennedy and Monroe, it may just be a rumor. Who really knows? But it certainly is much easier to believe that these men get bored and need a new playmate every once in a while not just to keep them entertained or satisfied, 
but perhaps also to spark envy in others. And of course, only the most gorgeous women can satisfy an ego the size of, well, a mafia don. Powerful men also trade girlfriends or lend them out to curtail favors, an experience shared on CBC News by Shirley Rice, former girlfriend of real-life mobster Rocco Papalia in the 1980s. Now just imagine what kind of dad or husband a philandering crime boss would be. The fifth point might then come as no surprise. Real mafia family life was extremely unstable and dysfunctional. It may be true that for a crime boss, the line between business and personal life is blurry at best. But in The Godfather, Vito managed to draw that line very clearly. He actually comes across as a patient, gentle, and loving father. The Corleones may have been far from perfect, but even then, they were portrayed as a rather normal family considering the kind of business they were in. Mixon writes that mafia families are severely dysfunctional, and I would understand this to mean that these Dons brought their tough guy attitudes home with them. I imagine they had unhappy spouses and frightened children, and that violence and a general sense of instability were the norm at home. However, an exception to this would be former capo regime Michael Franzese. In an interview with Valuetainment, Franzese explains that his father didn't want his son to join the mob. He never heard his father talk about the business, just like Don Corleone was with Michael. Vito wanted Michael to be a U.S. senator, remember? Franzese was in fact a pre-med student on his way to having a respectable medical career before circumstances made him decide to join the mob. It is not to say that these mafia bosses don't raise their children to be cunning and shrewd in business and money matters, but it might be equally believable that they don't choose to pass the family business onto their children either, or that they succeed at keeping the violence out of their homes. Even though The Godfather was based on historic figures and events in the mafia, I would much rather see it as the masterful work of art that it is. I enjoyed being lost in the dark world portrayed by Coppola. As for John Mixon's five points, they have not only been an excellent framework for today's video, but have also served as an excellent jumping off point for future discussion of all things Mafia. Do you have your own insights about the realism or lack thereof in the Godfather movies? Let me know what you think in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Until next time, thanks for watching.